everybody, it's Fufu here, and today I am going to avoid talking about the Pokemon Switch games because I'm pretty sure your subscription feed is already full of videos about those, so I thought you guys would want a break as much as I would. And also, just because I wanted to talk about something different. I may well cover the Pokemon Switch games in future videos, but I want to be doing something different, bringing something new to the table and not doing what other people are doing. So, watch out for interesting, entertaining and fun content about those games. But for today, I will be talking about a beautiful bird from Generation 7 that I have grown to love so much so that I have bred a shiny one, which I love so much, and that is Toucanon. It's great because not only does it look fantastic, it is definitely one of the best looking birds in Pokemon, but it also has a signature move called Beak Blast, which is pretty funky. It's a bit out there. Not the most competitively viable move, but the mechanics are just so fun and I know that I have to make a video about them. So that is what this is. Prepare yourself for some weird and wonderful mechanics as I give you five facts about Two Cannons Beak Blast. First off, I want to talk about the priority of Beak Blast. So how it works is right at the beginning of the turn, two cannon starts heating up its beak, and then right near the end of the turn, it goes for that powerful beak blast attack. The issue with that being that it is near the end of the turn that Beak Blast is unleashed. It's a minus priority move, which means you're more than likely going to be slower than your opponent. And that means that you're probably going to be hit by some attacks. There are only a few attacks that are actually slower than it those being Trick Room and, very importantly, phasing moves like Raw and Whirlwind. At least you're faster than them, so you're able to attack before you get Whirlwinded out. But where this move is actually pretty cool is that the heating up happens right at the beginning of the turn, and that's a plus priority move. In fact, it's faster than most other priority moves. So that's really cool, and why that's so good is while Toucanon is heating up its beak, if anything touches Toucanon, it's going to get burned. So right at the beginning of the turn, till right at the end of the turn, the opponent has a chance of getting burned if they touch to cannon. This window is pretty big, so it maximizes the chance of this happening. Why I thought it would be cool to talk about this is because if Toucanon is slower than the opponent anyway and it's about to be taken out, you may as well click Beak Blast because it's a plus priority move. So even if you weren't going to be able to get an attack off that turn, you can at least start heating your beak up and if the opponent touches you, you're able to get a burn off. So in that turn where you potentially wouldn't have had anything going for you, you've all of a sudden been able to burn the opponent, which is so cool. Another neat little fact about Beak Blast is that it's not itself a contact move. So if you have two Toucanon facing off against each other and they both go for Beak Blast, neither of them will get burned because they're not actually touching each other. What I imagine Beak Blast is, is that when you heat up the beak, it's like a heat wave that explodes outwards from Toucanon's beak, so it doesn't actually touch the opponent. This is pretty cool for a physical move, there aren't too many physical moves that don't make contact. And it means that your Toucanon won't be hurt by things like Rocky Helmet or Iron Barbs that the opponent might have. There are actually a number of ways that your opponent can punish you for making contact with their Pokemon this generation. So it's just neat that Beak Blast doesn't have to make contact. The third point which I find really interesting is Beak Blast can be used even if you're not going to be able to attack in a turn. By that I mean if you're going to be asleep or if you're paralyzed and you get fully paralyzed or you're immobilized with attraction, things like this, you can actually still use Beak Blast and get the heating off part done. So it's kind of the same as what I talked about in the first instance where if you're going to be knocked out, you can at least start your Beak Blast early. If you're going to be asleep, even while asleep, Toucanon can heat up its beak for a Beak Blast, but if it doesn't wake up in time, it just won't use the Beak Blast part of it. But it's a way of always being able to keep that burn window open, so your opponent really has to watch out with Toucanon. So yeah, the, the most obvious ways were, would be if you're asleep, uh, if you've used Rest and you've got guaranteed sleep turns, you can just click Beak Blast and you can get that heating up beak going, which I think is really cool. The fourth interesting fact that I want to give you today is that Beak Blast is the only damaging move that has the chance to burn the opponent that is not boosted by sheer force. It's not affected by sheer force at all. Now this is kind of a bad thing but also kind of a good thing. 
Tucannon itself does get access to Sheer Force, but when it has Sheer Force and the Beak Blast move, Beak Blast's power is not increased. So what Sheer Force does is it takes away secondary effects of moves and gives them a power increase instead. For example, Thunderbolt no longer is able to paralyze, but it's more powerful for that, which is pretty good. And Beak Blast being more powerful would be great, but for the fact that actually Tucannon gets Brave Bird, which is a bit more powerful anyway, so maybe just use that if you want more power. So what this means is you don't ever lose the burning effect of Beak Blast, which I think is p potentially a good thing. If you're going to be using Beak Blast over other flying type moves that Tucannon gets, the reason you're using it is probably because it can burn. So I think that that's a pretty good thing, but some people might see it as a bad thing. The final interesting fact that I want to give you today about Beak Blast is that Pokemon with the ability Bulletproof are completely immune from it, which I think is really weird. Now, because Beak Blast is relatively rare, you don't see it used that much, and because not many Pokemon get Bulletproof, you've probably never seen this. I definitely didn't anticipate this reaction, and I don't think, obviously it's not a good thing for Tucannon, I don't think it's that big a deal though. The only thing is that if you think about it, Chestnut is one of the Pokemon that gets bulletproof and it is four times weak to flying type attack So it would just be interesting to see that matchup where a flying type against a chestnut Is actually not going to be able to affect it at all with its flying type move I think that's pretty cool, but that's gonna be all for today guys So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like it really helps out my channel I hope you did enjoy it I put a little bit of thought into this one and I really do like two cannons, so I hope you appreciate it a bit more. I would say that Beak Blast isn't the best way to use two cannon if you want to use two cannon to its best. Brave Bird is a really good option. It gets Boom Burst, so you can make a really cool mixed attack. It gets some great coverage like Heat Wave, Flash Cannon. It gets that sk Skill Link Bullet Seed, which is really helpful for taking out Rock types. It's got Sword Stance. It's got so many awesome moves, which is why I like it so much. If your opponent sees it on your team, they have to be worried about what set it's running. It's a powerful special attacker and a physical attacker, so it can really break through some walls. But more importantly, it looks amazing while doing it. And on that note, that's where I'm going to leave it today. So thanks very much for watching. I've been Fufu, you've been awesome, and hopefully see you next time. Goodbye.